Alright, today we're going to go ahead and do a diaphragm replacement on a JBL. Uh, JBL driver number 2418H. Uh, the H-1 is similar and you'll see these used in several different JBL models. Um, the most common one that we see them in uh, would be the Eon series cabinets. Uh, the powered and non-powered 15-inch uh, Eon cabinets are the most common uh, that we see these in. But in any case, we have one here and we're going to go ahead and replace the diaphragm in it today. This particular diaphragm uh, has just stopped working and at this point uh, we're not really sure why but we'll take it apart and find out and then we'll replace it with a brand new diaphragm. So we'll be good to go on that. Now on the JBLs what you'll notice uh, on this particular model, the 2418H and H-1 is they give you a larger terminal and a smaller terminal. Okay, The larger terminal is your positive connection point. We like to mark the top plate of the magnet with a little red indicator here to let us know which way the original diaphragm was installed. And then on the JBL 2418 drivers we have three uh, Torx uh, screws here that are a T10 size. So we'll use our T10 Torx driver and we'll remove these three screws first in order to remove the top plate and the old diaphragm from the magnet. Those loosen very easily so that's not a problem. We'll take the screws out and we'll set those aside right here. Usually just a little nudging of the assembly will remove the back plate and the diaphragm which you can see here. Now at this point we don't see anything wrong with the diaphragm but the diaphragm uh, is showing open, it is dead so we can assume that there's probably a corrosion point in the flex lead connection here or here to the diaphragm which is very common on these uh, and that's usually what happens uh, when these just simply quit working and they have not been overpowered which uh, appears to be the case here. So we'll remove the uh, diaphragm, the old diaphragm from the top plate simply by kind of prying it apart like this and you can see there's now two pieces here. This is the piece we'll be replacing which is the diaphragm and voice coil assembly. This is an original JBL part that's in this one and we'll be replacing it with the same. Uh, we also have an aftermarket part that we uh, use on occasion uh, for these as well that installs the same way. So in this case for our purposes today we'll show you the factory uh, part installation. This is the old part, we'll set that aside. This top plate is going to be reused so we'll just kind of set that over here for now. We want to take a look at the magnet uh, gap and face plug as usual when we do a diaphragm replacement. We want to take a look at that and make sure that the face plug is tight. There's no loose parts here and no obvious signs of uh, rust or other particles that have gathered uh, in the magnet gap here uh, in this area. And for good measure, uh, as usual, we'll go ahead and clean with a piece of sticky uh, masking tape folded sticky side out. Business card works well. Okay, Around the magnet gap a couple of times here in order to clean any dust or debris that might not be visible. Uh, by simply looking inside. Usually a couple of turns is all it takes to make sure that everything's been removed and as you can see we have picked up some dust and dirt particles on the tape and that's very normal on these even if they've been sealed and used in a clean environment. So we'll go ahead and set that aside. <coughs> At this point we're ready for the new diaphragm uh, to be installed. Notice we, again we have our positive indicator mark here from the removal of the original diaphragm and then the new diaphragm uh, comes boxed in uh, from JBL just like this. So we'll go ahead and remove the new replacement diaphragm for the installation. Okay, And you'll notice a couple of things with the JBL parts. Um, the first thing is that they come with, uh, with a serial number here. It's usually indicated with a little white sticker either on the outside or the inside of the box. I like to take those off if they remove easily here, we'll try this. And I like to take the sticker that's the serial number of the new part, again, and this only applies to the factory uh, diaphragms, and put it right on the magnet plate here, right on the outside of the magnet, so that we have a, di uh, a serial number there, just in case something happens prematurely to the diaphragm. Uh, and JBL can use this for tracking purposes for quality control. All right, so we'll go ahead and open up the new diaphragm assembly. You'll notice the way they install it in here is they kind of use some string tape on both sides. We'll just simply peel that away, remove the tape, 
which holds the diaphragm in place. Throw that out. We want to clean this. We have a little bit of the packing material styrofoam here, so we want to remove that. It's always a good idea to blow on the diaphragm, blow any dust or dirt, dirt particles off of the assembly uh, before you install it. Okay, make sure that everything looks good. We always like to take a black sharpie and mark a date on the diaphragm before we install it just to give us an indicator of when it was uh, was uh, installed for service. Okay, so we'll do that and that's good to go. Now if you recall on the JBL 2418 diaphragm the larger terminal is the positive, the smaller terminal is the negative, that's easy to remember. <coughs> At this point we'll go ahead and reinstall the diaphragm. The locating pins on this particular model are on the outside of the diaphragm. There's three of them here that centers the diaphragm properly. Basically snap it in place. You can turn it a little bit if necessary. Make sure your screw holes line up. There's three screw holes here and then we have the back cap or back plate to go back in place uh, on top of the new diaphragm. Just like so. Okay. So we've got our three torque screws, T10, one drops, you'll see it'll stick right on the magnet, that's handy. Go ahead and just snug it slightly, don't tighten it all the way at this point. You want to get all three installed, and then we'll come back and snug them all the way before testing. Okay, back to the first one, about a quarter turn, second one, quarter turn, and third one, quarter turn. So we're all set, positive indicator, large terminal, negative uh, obviously by default is the small one here and uh, this JBL driver and horn should be ready to go. Last thing we'll do is we'll have our signal generator set up um, to run a, a sweep frequency on the driver just to make sure that everything is working and it is. Just want to sweep it a couple of times to make sure that it's clean and isn't binding in the magnet gap there and this one is ready to go. So now you have done the repair on the JBL 2418H, 2418H-1, and many other models um, from JBL are uh, very, very similar. Okay.